Welcome to this week's roundup of news and polls from Ipsos Mori. And one of the most striking findings this week is a very sharp fall in the proportion of people who see that the government's messaging on the coronavirus is clear. It fell from 90% to 56%. Uh, it's particularly uh, a particular drop among Labour voters, but uh, who are perhaps less well disposed to the government. But I think it reflects uh, the fact that as the government moves from a very simple stay at home message to a go out but be alert message, uh, that there is nuance, there is, and it's and communicating that and a balanced view of risk becomes much more challenging for the government. Because the evidence is in our latest polling with King's College London is that despite the restrictions being eased on the 10th of May, most people indeed are actually staying at home. We found that 41% of adults had not left their home most days in the last week. So there's a large proportion of people who are literally not going out at all. And they seem to be prepared to stay at home. If anything, they're getting used to life in lockdown compared to the start of, the, of this experience at the beginning of April. And although uh, people are starting to break the rules sometimes to see family and friends, as indeed the Dominic Cummings scandal shows us, overall the public is still very worried about the risk posed by the virus. And they put it well ahead um, of anything to do with the economy, their own mental health, or indeed the disrupted education of children, as our polling with the Policy Institute at King's College shows. And so people are clearly nervous about easing out of lockdown. And most of us, 54%, now say that the government is moving too quickly to ease lockdown. And only 13% of us think that they've gone too slowly. So by four to one or so, people say the government's going out too fast from lockdown than too slow. Now, whether that's because people are comfortable and because the government, the massive intervention in the economy has protected uh, millions of people's incomes is not clear, but it's clear that the public is very, very cautious. And people are also uncomfortable about their kids going back to school on the 1st of June. 56% of parents say they're worried about that. And they're also just confused about the guidelines. We found that a quarter of us think that all children will be going back to school on the 1st of June, when of course it's only certain year groups. We've got a quarter of us roughly who think that all pubs and bars and restaurants will be opening on the 1st of July. I wish. The government has said that they must remain closed until the 4th of July at the earliest and haven't given any clear date when they will actually open. So people are confused about what's going to happen. And, you know, generally we're finding a fairly high level of anxiety, but also caution. Overall, globally, the British are most likely to be experiencing anxiety under the current conditions, with nearly three out of ten of us say that our mental health is suffering, and a quarter of us either struggling with overeating and or under-exercising, something I can certainly feel some sympathy with, but we're, you know, we're generally sort of hunkered down. Uh, and so the government's popularity's ratings were falling even before the Dominic Cummings scandals. 45% uh, favourable to Boris Johnson, we found last week, down six points from April. We'll keep tracking that. And 47% of us disagree now that the UK government has responded well to COVID-19 compared with other countries. Uh, so we're sort of, we've got the message that our death rate per million does seem to be higher than in many other countries. And only 29% of us think the government has responded well. Many of us, 70% in our latest polling, think the government went into lockdown too late. And interestingly, if we look around the uh, countries of the United Kingdom, in Scotland, we've got eight out of 10 people saying that Nicola Sturgeon has done a good job, only three out of 10 Scots saying that Boris Johnson has. Although in fairness to Boris Johnson, the Scots didn't much like him even before the coronavirus began. But part of this is explained by the difference in messaging and the different, slightly different stances taken by the two governments. So 52% of Scots, a majority, say that their, message, their government's messaging has been very clear, and it is more cautious and conservative than the UK government's messaging. In contrast, only 14% of Scots say that the UK government's messaging has been very clear. So this is respect, re reflecting this difficulty in the more nuanced messages about risk that the government is now going to have to keep pressing home. Overall, we've explored the generational response to the virus and how Gen Z compared to perennials or millennials is, is dealing with it. We know that older people, of course, are more at risk from the virus, but we also know that the young and particularly young people, the younger families are finding dealing with it more stressful and more difficult, and of course, more likely to have their employment disrupted. We've also looked at the lessons from COVID-19 and what they imply for the fight against climate change and the, the way in which society and business has responded very rapidly 
to the immediate danger of COVID-19 and what that might tell us about what we need to do next as a society and as business and as government to deal with a, a, a danger that might kill even more people than COVID-19, climate change itself. That's on the 11th of June. Uh, if you're interested in our work on COVID-19, which we're updating on an almost daily basis, do please bookmark this page. All of our releases are covering implications for government, implications for brands and business. They're all there. And finally, thank you very much for listening. See you next week. Bye-bye.